Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and today we're starting off my March wrap up as this is a vlog style wrap up. I think what I've decided to do for the months that I'm not doing weekly reading vlogs, I'm going to do a vlog style wrap up because you won't be seeing as in depth thoughts regarding the books I'm reading those months because I'm not going to be weekly vlogging. So it kind of balances it out. So one month you're going to get four weekly reading vlogs where I talk in depth about the books. And then the month where I'm not doing weekly reading vlogs, I'm going to do a vlog style reading wrap up. So I can't believe I'm already saying this, but as of March 3rd, I have already finished my first book and I finished it last night. So it took me two days to finish this book because I absolutely loved it. I think I have my reading mojo back, which I'm so, so excited for. And that's because I finished Me, My Dad and The End of the Rainbow by Benjamin Dean yesterday evening. I flew through this in two days absolutely adored it. This is a middle grade LGBTQ plus book about a young boy called Archie. His parents have just got divorced and they really hate each other but they're still kind of holding the secret close to the heart that Archie doesn't know about and he's getting really frustrated that he kind they won't kind of tell him what's going on and one day a pride flyer falls out of his dad's pocket and he kind of starts putting the pieces together and he thinks that going to pride will kind of fix his family and along the way as he goes on this adventure with his two best friends to Pride in London he finds another set of family through family he chooses and it's just such a wholesome pure book I was smiling throughout it was so so pure I loved it so much I can't believe that of March I have finally read my first five star book of 2021 and it deserves it. It really, really deserves it. And I'm so glad I waited and read 17 books prior to this one to get to this one and rate it five stars. It was pure magic. I enjoyed it so, so much. I love middle grade, but a lot of middle grade I find are fantasy based and I'm not a fantasy reader and I have tried reading fantasy middle grade before. It's just not my cup of tea. I like contemporary middle grade. So this is why this one hit the spot so perfectly. And the diverse range of characters, the way it was written, just I couldn't fault this book. It was pure perfection and I absolutely adored it. First book of March, first five star of 2021 with me, my dad and the end of the rainbow. And then from the first of the month, I also started buddy reading Normal People by Sally Rooney. We've been reading 50 pages a day. I've been reading it with Chloe and as well as Crazy Book Lady. It's been really, really fun to buddy read this and I am loving this as well. Like I was on my own live on Monday and I was like, I can't believe I'm reading at the minute like two possible five star books. It was so bizarre to finally feel like I'm finally reading books I'm absolutely loving. I am enjoying this a lot. This is... <laughs> literally the most mundane plot possible but that's what I love about books I just love reading and getting insight into people's minds and this is exactly what you're getting with normal people and I am loving it it's just so mundane so ordinary about two normal people going to university and just figuring out life and it's just hitting the perfect spot for me I'm really 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 enjoying it so yeah I still need to read my buddy pages for today I have about 30 pages left, but I'm about halfway through it so far on the 3rd and we're aiming to finish this by Friday the 5th. So yeah, so far so good on this one. And because I am only reading Normal People now because I finished Me, My Dad and The End of the Rainbow yesterday, I'm going to start Renegades by Marissa Meyer. This is a bit of a chunker, but it's about 550 pages, but I want to get started. I don't know too much about this book apart from it's about super heroes. Yeah, I'm intrigued to get to this one. I'm trying to balance a bit more of contemporary to other genres because I'm just feeling like I'm getting overloaded with contemporaries and I think that's why I was feeling so slumpish in the last two months because I've just been overloading myself with the same genre and they're all getting so repetitive and they're all getting so samey that I just needed to like massively switch up. So this is why I'm picking up this chunker. Not my usual genre, but I'm excited to get it nevertheless. And yeah, that's exciting. I'll keep posted. <laughs> Hi, it's now March 5th and yesterday was actually World Book Day and if you saw one of my weekly reading vlogs in February you know that Rhiannon sent me a copy of Killjoy very very kindly and we buddy read it kind of yesterday evening to celebrate World Book Day because this is one of the World Book Day £1 book token books. I binged it before she even started reading because she had a really busy evening but oh my god I love this book so much I gave it a 4.5 star rating, the exact same rating as I gave Good Girl's Guide to Murder. This is actually the prequel to that as at the end of this book you kind of realise why the events in the first book are happening and it's really really good. Basically this is a short 120 page story about Pip who's our main character in the entire Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. I think it's a trilogy. 
and you follow her as she goes on a murder mystery dinner party with her friends to celebrate the end of exams and it I was hooked from like the first like chapter like it was so so good it kept me intrigued I felt part of the story like I felt so invested when I was reading it I couldn't put this book down I flew through it obviously it's only 120 pages I read it in its entirety during India sprints last night and it was just like the perfect world book day book I really really enjoyed it I gave it a 4.5 stars so this is the second book I finished in March and hopefully I'll finish Normal People today as well because this is my buddy read and our buddy read finishes today so I have 60 pages left of this to finish so in the first week of March and it's only Friday I have the whole weekend um, I would have finished three books which is brilliant so yeah I'll keep you posted and give you my full thoughts on normal people once I finish this one hopefully today so so far March is turning out a hell of a lot better than February which I'm so so pleased about <laughs> Hi guys, it's now Monday the 8th of March and I have finished another book. I have finished four books already in the first week of March. I don't know how I managed it this week. I, okay, I kind of do. One was a middle grade, one was a really short um, book for World Book Day and then I just managed to finish two other books as well. Which is still pretty crazy but the next book I managed to finish was an ARC. It wasn't on my March TBR at all but I realised when I was just looking through NetGalley that this book that I got approved for was actually coming out in April and I probably should read it in March so I could review it before the publication day. And this book is Between Perfect and Real by Roy Steve? Stoive? Stoive? <laughs> put the author's name I am so bad with names I can remember names and I can remember song titles and I can remember lyrics but actually pronouncing names um is a whole different ball game and I'm not very good at it um I'll put the cover and the author as well on the screen now for you guys but I really really enjoyed this book this book I gave a four stars basically it's about our main character called Dean he knows he's transgender he knows he's a trans man but everyone in school refers to him as a lesbian and he's trying to come to terms with that during being in high school and he's just auditioned for the school play where he auditioned to be Romeo in Romeo and Juliet and his drama teacher allows him to play Romeo and he's confused on how he needs to portray this character and whether he wants to portray it as himself or someone they expect him to be and it's all about self-discovery it really hits upon the topic of trans and it was a very very educational book for me regarding the aspect of me not being own voices and I learned a lot about what trans people may go through day to day and the abuse and stuff they get for just trying to live life for themselves and be true to themselves. So I really, really enjoyed the aspect. It was very educational for me. I'm not sure whether if you were trans, it would be too info dumpy because it's very basic uh, surface level information, I feel like. But once again, I am not a known voice reviewer. I do think this book will be crucial for trans people in the community to feel that they're not alone. I do think this book was really well written and I really enjoyed the storyline, especially Dean's friends, some of them especially, especially Ronnie. I loved Ronnie to pieces. He was an, an amazing character, an amazing best friend to be portrayed. And yeah, I just really, really enjoyed it. I thought the ending was a little too abrupt, but overall I thought the pacing of the book was really well done and I would highly check it out when it comes out April 13th. Um, there's a whole review if you want to check it out on my Goodreads, which is always linked down below for you guys. But yeah, that was the next book I finished. Four books from the 8th of March, which is mental. I started Renegades last week, but I only got about 30 pages into this. I'm not sure if I'm feeling it. I might just put it for the, to the side for a little bit, because if you saw my March TBR, one of the prompts was to read a book with blue on the cover, because that's my favourite colour. So I was going to pick this book, but Between Perfect and Real also has blue on the cover, so I might just switch out and use that book for that prompt, because I'm not really feeling this book at the minute, but who knows, it is only the 8th of uh, March. But I will be going on Rebecca's sprints this evening, as well as Chloe's sprints tomorrow. I think I'm wonky. Is that better? I had to charge my camera battery because it died, and I only have one camera battery, and it takes a couple of hours to charge, so... Everything's kind of changed, but yeah, what I was saying was that I'm on Rebecca's sprints this evening, I'm on Chloe's sprints tomorrow evening on Tuesday, and I'm also helping Chloe host some sprints for her 24-hour readathon this coming Saturday, so I have lots of time to read. 
So whether I will continue with this or not this week, I am uncertain. But I think on Rebecca's sprints tonight, I'm actually going to start Good Girl, Bad Blood because I want to keep up my reading momentum. And I know when I read Good Girl's Guide to Murder, I threw... Blah, 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 blah. I threw... No. I threw... No. I threw... No. I flew. <laughs> wow. I flew through this. Why did that take me so long to say? <laughs> yeah, I got through Good Girl's Guide to Murder very, very quickly. Also a way of saying that word. Um, so I think to keep up my to keep up my reading momentum, Good Girl Bad Blood might be a really good shout. So I'm actually gonna start this tonight and hopefully get a big chunk of it done on Rebecca's sprints. But Rebecca is the most loveliest human um, possible. Like she's so sweet and so funny and we talk a lot on those sprints. So I feel like the reading to chatting ratio will be a bit unbalanced, but I don't really care. So any reading I can get done tonight will be beneficial. Plus yesterday, Sunday the 7th, I actually read over 200 pages. So if I take a little bit of an ease off reading this evening, I won't really mind because I have finished four books already in March. But yeah, this might be the next plan. I don't know about this one. I might put it to the side for now. I'm really just not feeling it. So yeah, we're going to go with Good Girls Bad Blood. Okay, I've decided. Yeah, I will keep posted once I have finished a book, hopefully soon, but who knows. At this point in my YouTube career, I think you've seen every angle of my room, but we like switching up here on this channel. It is now Thursday the 11th of March and I finished my fifth book of the month. I just finished this morning Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. This is the second book in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy, the third book coming out in August this year. So if you didn't know, the first book Good Girl's Guide to Murder follows our main character Pip who reopened a police investigation of a murdered girl in her town but she believes the murderer was wrongly accused. So as a final school project she reopens that case to delve a little deeper into it and kind of see what happened and she opens up this whole can of worms and secrets about the town that she had no idea about. The second book still follows Pip but she's figuring out a new case um, about her town. I obviously don't want to say any more than that but it's a continuation um, of the first book and the third book is coming out in August. I enjoyed this one but not as much as the first one. It didn't captivate me as much and it didn't intrigue me as much. It wasn't as page turning. I really fell head over heels with Good Girl's Guide to Murder. It put me on edge. I couldn't stop reading it. I felt like I couldn't put the book down until I found out the answers. Whereas this one I could easily have put down and left and then come back to it a few hours later, a day later, etc. So it did take me a little bit longer to get through this one as normal, but I still thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. I love how Holly Jackson writes about murder mysteries. I think the way she weaves in all the information and all the clues, I never know what's gonna happen. I never know what the real kind of end plot's gonna be. It always keeps me guessing, and I really, really enjoy that about her writing. This book just didn't do it for me massively. Good Girl's Guide to Murder got a very, very high four stars, almost a five, but this one got just a four stars, um, a bit lower down. So still in the same four star bracket as the first one, but just not as good. Um, still, yeah, still really enjoyed it, but um, not as much, which is a shame, but I still really love, love the series and I still really enjoy Holly Jackson's writing style and I am excited for the third book. All good things must come to an end, all good dead things has the word good and dead in it so she's off to Cambridge in the first one in the third one and I guess we'll see where Pip ends up after the trilogy ends but I'm excited for the third one enough rambling that was my fifth book of the month but yeah that's all I have okay I'll see you when I finish another book hopefully tomorrow yay hi guys I haven't updated my March wrap-up vlog in a very long time like over a week so I thought I'd come in and quickly update but the last books I've read, because this week I've been in a massive reading slump, I've been reading here and there, but it hasn't been like my go-to activity when I have some downtime. So the last books I read was the Breaking series by Tracy Puckett for Chloe's 24 hour readathon. I have a whole vlog dedicated to those three books. I'll link up above and down below for you guys if you want to check it out and you have missed it to hear all like my really in-depth thoughts. But I gave the first two books in that trilogy a three stars and I gave the third one a four stars. I enjoy the series, it was a reread for me. I first read it back in 2015 so I wanted to just kind of like revisit it and see what my thoughts were now reading it like six years later and I do still really enjoy the two main characters Mandy and Gabe but obviously the story isn't that complex, the writing isn't that complex and it was just a fun enjoyable read. There was nothing special about it, I didn't love it and I didn't hate it so yeah those were like my quick thoughts on the Breaking series by Tracy Puckett. 
And this week I've tried reading three books, none of which have kind of really stuck. The first two were in another reading vlog that's up on my channel now, which was a try chapter. I read the first chapter of Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers, and I read the first chapter of The Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green, which I did then decide to read. And I've been slowly, very, very slowly making my way through it this week. And I'm only on page 111, so I highly doubt I would finish it by the end of this week. But maybe, hopefully, I can finish it next week. We'll see. I doubt I'll read anything this weekend either, but who knows? I feel like a lot of people are feeling very much in a slump like me. A lot of people are tweeting, is anyone else in a slump because I'm feeling so slumpish? And I think it's just something in the air with the book people at the minute. Everyone is in a reading slump. So yeah, we'll see. I'm still reading a little bit here and there, but like I said, it's not like my main focus. So I'm 111 pages into this book. And then yesterday, because I wanted to read something, but I wasn't feeling in the mood to read this. So I picked up my reread of I Heart New York by Lindsay Kelk. And I, I love it. I'm tabbing up for the second time because I want to tab it all up and kind of remember the funny moments. Things I love are purple, like friendship purple, and just things generically of the book that I love. Orange is things I find funny that I'm actually laughing out loud at. And then green has made me angry, but not in the kind of way it's written, just in the main plot with the husband being an absolute dick because if you didn't know this book basically follows our main character Angela her fiance of like 15 years like high school sweetheart sweethearts cheated on her so she just randomly ups and leaves and goes to start a new life in New York and the green little tab was just the fiance being an absolute dick basically so yeah that's the only thing um I've tabbed in like anger but everything else has been funny or absolutely lovable because I absolutely love this series and it feels so right just to be back in this world when I've hit a slump because it's just so easy to read. I'm listening along with the audiobook, tabbing it up as I go, and I'm actually writing in it. When was the last time, yeah, I wrote in it? I was just like, this is so funny. So Angela's best friend is Jenny and she basically gives her like a massive makeover. And she says, do you want your racks to be around your knees at the age of 40? So I underlined it. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. I underlined it, underlined it in pencil and wrote next to it. Maybe I should get my bra size checked out because I definitely feel like this is something that I keep putting off. So I just <laughs> put that in and I'm actually having a really, really fun time rereading it, tapping it up and writing in it, which is so, so crazy. So yeah, I'll probably just focus on these two for the next week. I'm hoping I kind of beat my slump next week and I'm back to normal reading routine. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the update that I have. So, also, so random, but I'm wearing jeans for the first time in probably since I last went to the office to work and I'm actually feeling so good about myself. So yeah, if you're feeling a bit like, ugh, about yourself, maybe just do your hair, do your makeup, put on a nice outfit you feel confident in and, and I guarantee your mood might be a little bit better. So yeah. I will update you when I have next finished a book, but who knows when that will be. <laughs> I hope you're all doing well, guys. Hi guys, it's now the 25th of March and I have definitely hit a slump. It's not horrendous, like I'm still reading here and there, but it's definitely taking me longer to read books and it's definitely not the first thing that I wanna do when I finish work or when I sit down in bed, I just wanna binge YouTube at a minute. So we are slowly trudging through the rest of my TBR for this month. I'm happy to announce though that I have managed to finish I Heart New York by Lindsay Kirk. This is a reread for me. I read it for the first time two, maybe even three years ago now, in 2018 I think. And absolutely loved it. I listened to it as an audio book. And so because it's one of my favourite series, I have decided to start collecting the books. Because there are eight books in the series. Um, and reread them, tab them up. And that's all I thought I was going to do. Reread them and tab them up. Um, but when I started rereading this book, I was like, I want to write in this. So I started writing in it. I will find you some examples. Little things like Alex, which is the love interest. And then <laughs> down the page, it's like, I'm Johnny. And I was like, oops, not Alex. Because obviously I can't remember the book very well. So I thought it was Alex and it wasn't, <laughs> which is quite funny. Um, and yeah, just things like that. And then my boyfriend is called Mark, and he spells it M-A-R-C. A lot of Marks out there spell it with a K. Um, and the ex of this main character, Angela, is called Mark, but he spells it with a K. So I put Mark, a dick, because he spells it with a K. Um, <laughs> just funny things like that. And it really 
made my reading experience more enjoyable because I was writing in it and I was following along with Angela's narrative and it was just really really fun. I really, really enjoyed it. This obviously is a reread. I rated it four stars before and I actually bumped it up this time to a 4.5. It's not the most perfect book. I put this on Instagram. It's not the most perfect book but it's perfect for me. I love the romance. I love Angela as a main character. I love seeing her evolve and develop across the eight books in this series and I cannot wait to read more. Obviously they're all rereads um, and I'm just excited to continue rereading this series and tabbing up and writing in them. So I have these copies forever now and they're all tabbed up and pretty. The purple are anything I love about the book that is friendship related or just general things about the books I loved. Orange is things that made me laugh out loud. I did a whole key in the front. Pink is things love related, relating to Angela's relationship with Alex. Green is things that piss me off, not because of the writing or things I actually hated about the book, but things that just agged me because of the storyline. It's like I found her mum really annoying, she really mumsies her, um, which I don't like, but it adds to the storytelling and adds to Angela's character. So it's just little things that annoy me. So I said pissed off rather than like angry. And then yellow things are things of interest like the scenery and the descriptions and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, really, really had a fun time reading this. Another book knocked off my March TBR. And last week I did start reading An Absolutely Remarkable Thing. I think I mentioned that to you, but I can't remember if I did. I started it in a try chapter tag, which I'll link up above and down below for you guys, because I did film me reacting to the first chapter of this book. And I do really, really enjoy it, but I was hitting quite a bad portion of my slump. So that's when I picked up my reread of I Heart New York to just try and get out of that slump and this definitely helped me get out of it. I read this very quickly. Um, so I haven't picked up the remaining of this and I have like 200 pages plus, like 250 pages left of this book. I'm going to continue reading this one today and see where I got up to because I'm going on India's sprints. So yeah, I'm going to see how far I can get into this one. And then the last book I want to start and finish this month is this is my America. I keep putting this book off and I have no idea why. I enjoyed the first 50 pages I read of this back in February. So I just need to buckle down and read this. So that's two books that I need to finish, definitely. And I would also love to get to an arc that I have that is coming out in April called The Summer Job by Lindsay Dent, which is, I'll put a picture up on the screen, which is about a woman who takes her best friend's job and she goes and works in like a hotel for the summer, pretending to be her best friend, I think. It sounds like a fun rom-com chick lick, um, but I definitely need to get a head start on that because it comes out in the middle of April and I have another arc that's coming out in the middle of April and I don't want to read both of them in the first two weeks of April. So I thought I would try and get this one done in March to just level out the stress a little bit in April. So I have three books to read in a week. That's the plan. Whether it will happen, I have no idea because I still don't feel 100% motivated to read. So let's hope I can do it. Seven days, three books, two full books and 250 pages of another book. So we'll see if I can bump up my reading again. If that doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, but I would love for it to happen. So fingers, fingers crossed I can make it happen. I hope you guys are all doing well. I feel like a lot of people are hitting slumps at the minute. So I'm with you, I absolutely feel you. I hate not wanting to read because it's one of my favorite pastimes and literally I was on YouTube today because I didn't want to read, but there was nothing on YouTube to watch either. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so bored. If only I wanted to read. So let's hope in just sprints tonight, help me get started and kickstart my reading of this. And yeah. I will stop rambling. Yeah, let's just crack on with the last week of March and try and get another three books read. Wish me luck, guys. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm here to wrap up my March wrap up. I still have two days of the month left. It's currently Tuesday the 30th, so I have all of today because it's the morning and I have all of tomorrow to finish my final book on my TBR. On Sunday evening, I did manage to finish An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. This book featured in my recent try chapter tag. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link up above and down below for you guys. I really, really liked the first chapter of this, hence why I continued reading it. And I did enjoy the first about 150 pages. And then it started to really slow down. I wasn't as interested anymore. The story kind of wasn't going anywhere. And then the last like chapter, I was so intrigued and I'm just like mind blown by the ending. So this book was very much a roller coaster. It basically follows our main character, April, when she stumbles across a 
weird sculpture that just pops out out of nowhere in New York City one evening and she gets her best friend to come down and film her in front of it and they start like a documentary series and they become viral overnight about this sculpture which they call Carl and yeah it's a whole kind of mystery it's very sci-fi-esque I didn't realize that when I came into this book but it does heavily talk, touch upon some scientific explanation and all that sort of stuff which kind of went over my head but overall I enjoyed the book I gave it a three stars but I just don't think it's my sort of cup of tea and I'm not sure whether I will continue with the series as I know book three is coming out and book two recently came out as well I just don't think this one's for me but I do think the writing style is really good I like Hank Green's writing style so I would be intrigued to see what else he brings out in the future but yeah overall an average read nothing special nothing amazing I'm kind of a little bit disappointed because the first 150 pages did really capture my attention but it is what it is <laughs> I can't remember if I told you like my reading plans for finishing three books for the rest of the month that isn't gonna happen if I didn't tell you I was planning on finishing an absolutely remarkable thing starting and finishing the summer job by Lizzie Dent which is an arc that I have that comes out in April as well as starting and finishing this is my America by Kim Johnson that plan isn't happening anymore I'm scrapping the arc and I'm just gonna read it in April before it comes out because I have two days left and frankly it's just not gonna happen so I did start this is my America last night on my own 1k live show sprints and I got 73 pages in, which is further than I got last time I tried to read this. I tried to read this back in February and I got about 50 pages in, but I just wasn't feeling it. So I put it down, hoping to restart it this month. And I have, and I've got further than I did before, which is always a good sign. So I'm hoping to obviously finish it by tomorrow. It's a 300 and it's almost a 400 page book. Yeah. Oh dear. I didn't realize it was that hefty. Trying not to spoil myself. It's 390 pages. I didn't realise it was this hefty. Um, I'm 70 pages in, so I need to read like 200 pages today so I can finish the rest of tomorrow. Ah. Um, I am obviously not filming this once I finish this book because this video is going up today as you're watching this. I'm filming it in the morning. So in hopes that I will finish this, I'm sure I will because I'm very much the person that has to finish books by the end of the month. However, the other book that was on my TBR for this month was Illuminae by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman, and that isn't going to happen. It was my Twitter poll prompt for the month. You guys picked it, but I'm sorry to disappoint you. I'm not going to be reading it. I just, it's one of those things where it's really not my cup of tea and I have to be in the correct mindset to read it. And I thought that time was going to come this month and it just hasn't. I think maybe because this one is also very scientific and sciencey based that I couldn't do two in one month. So yeah, that isn't gonna happen. I've read 10 books this month, which is pretty incredible. I read eight books in the first two weeks, hit a major slump, and then finish off the month by reading another two books, The Absolutely Remarkable Thing, and This Is My America. So overall, this month has been pretty good, and I think I'm finally getting out of my rut of what to pick, because if you know, in January and February, I was very much reading only three-star books, but I finally read a five-star book, and so many of the books I read this month hit the four-star category, which is incredible. I'm so, so happy with that. So yeah, that comes to the end of my March wrap-up. If you enjoyed this vlog-style wrap-up once again, make sure you give this video a massive thumbs up. Subscribe down below to see future content from me, such as vlog-style wrap-ups, TBR party games, a fun one is coming actually this Sunday. So make sure you are subscribed and the notification bell is on so you don't miss that one. Reading vlogs and all that fun bookish content your heart could desire. Make sure you're subscribed so you never miss a thing. And without further ado, I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.